Thor's hammer is one of the most powerful weapons in the Marvel Universe, granting all those who wield it the power of Thor, meaning enhanced strength, speed, durability, flight, and of course, the power to summon and blast lightning. And in order to protect this power from the wrong hands, the hammer is enchanted so that only those who are worthy can lift it. Now, generally, this just means four, but there are, of course, a few others who have lifted the hammer over the years. And this video is going to look at whether Batman could be one such person. Is Batman worthy to lift Mjolnir? Well, first of all, we need to decide what makes a person worthy. Well, and it's hard to say what this is because it's never clearly stated exactly what the guidelines are. We just get vague comments that you must be noble of mind and pure of heart. And of course, not too arrogant or murder happy, as that's why Thor stopped being worthy to wield his hammer in the first place. And for those who don't know this story, it's actually pretty simple. Thor basically became too cocky and arrogant and was just being basically a bit of a bastard. So Odin took the hammer and put this worthy enchantment on it, and Thor was unable to use it until he again became worthy. But anyway, getting back to the point. In terms of being noble, according to Odinism, there are nine virtues that make a person noble. And since this belief system stems from faith in Odin and the Asgardians, we're going to use this as a guideline for whether a person is worthy. Because it just makes sense to use a doctrine that comes down from Odin. After all, Odin is the one who put the enchantment on the hammer in the first place. So a core of beliefs based on his philosophy, well, it just kind of makes sense to use this because we don't really have much else. Now, these nine noble virtues are, number one, courage. Now, I don't think anyone can argue that Batman doesn't have courage. He certainly qualifies for this, so I'm not gonna waste much time on it. Number two, truth. Now, when it comes to keeping secrets, Batman is nothing short of a master. He lives in the shadows and lies about, or at least keeps certain things, from damn near everybody he's ever met. So he definitely falls short in this category, as he has a really hard time telling the truth. In fact, at this point, it's probably not even a case that he needs to keep these secrets. It's just he's so used to doing it, he can't think of a different way of doing it. So he definitely falls short in this category. Number three, honor. Now, this one is a difficult one to judge because Batman does have a code of honor, yes, but it's not really the same as most people's sense of honor. Yes, if Batman gives his word, then he does usually keep it. But at the same time, he has no problem keeping enormous amounts of lies from people. In the comics, he's lied to the whole Bat family on a regular basis, and at one point even made all of them think that Dick Grayson was dead, when he was actually working undercover for Batman, which really tore the Bat family up for fairly obvious reasons. And to be completely honest, he didn't really need to keep it from them. He just did it because... Well, in all honesty, it was probably just a bit of bad writing to create a sense of drama. And in truth, he probably could have just told them that Dick Grayson was undercover. And that's just one of the things that he's done to the people he loves. And it's one example of many. But everything he does, he does do for a reason. He doesn't do it for nefarious purposes or just to be a dick. He does it because he believes it is right and the best way to fight crime and keep on mission. So, although this one is a bit of a grey area, I'd say the Batman does have a sense of honour. He is the Dark Knight, after all. And although many would disagree with it, he does have a code of ethics and conduct. It's just that it's very, very different to most people's views of ethics and conduct. Number 4. Fidelity Now, this one is hard. After all, Bruce Wayne is a womanising playboy. And although Bruce Wayne is just an act that Batman puts on to keep his secret identity, well, Batman himself also gets around when it comes to women. However, if he is in a relationship with just one woman, then I believe he would remain loyal to them. After all, he was going to marry Catwoman, and I genuinely believe he would have sworn off all women if the two had become married. And so I would say that he does qualify in terms of fidelity. Yes, he does get around, but that's only because he's not in a relationship. And quite frankly, if you're not in a relationship, well, then you're entitled to play the field. Number five, discipline. Now, this one is open and shut. Batman has spent his whole life being nothing but disciplined, so he is 100% fine in this field. Number six, hospitality. Now, although Bruce Wayne has a mansion and a great amount of wealth and is very generous with these things, I don't really think that anyone would describe Batman as being hospitable. After all, he has no sense of humor and is very direct and quite confrontational in the way he talks to people. Next time you want to help, do me a favor, don't. 
and although he's not the worst host ever, Batman certainly isn't welcoming to pretty much anybody. So I'd say that he does fall a little short in this category. Number 7. Self-Reliance Although Batman has the Bat family, and of course his loyal caretaker Alfred, taking all this into account, he's nonetheless very self-reliant, often insisting to work alone, and almost never asking for assistance in battle, to the point where he almost takes this too far. And he is frequently fighting people who are way more powerful than him, and he could easily just call in the Justice League or ask one of his superpowered friends for help. And although he has done so in certain circumstances, Are you asking for help? Yes. You never ask for help. Usually, he won't. He'll just face them himself, because he wants to deal with it all himself. So, I think he's actually a very self-reliant person. Number 8. Industriousness Now, this basically means working hard and good time management. And since Batman runs both Wayne Industries and is Batman and is leader of the Justice League and he does all three of these things 24-7, well, I'd say that he's definitely industrious. In fact, I'm not going to put any more points to this because he is very industrious. No one can deny that Batman is definitely hardworking. Number 9. Perseverance Now, this kind of leads on from industriousness and it's very true that Batman has this quality. After all, he spent his entire life training to fight crime, and then when he was qualified enough, he started fighting crime full time. And he has been doing it for decades, without ever showing signs of stopping. He has persevered against the most insane odds, and always manages to win. Hell, he's even taken down Superman when he has no superpowers himself, and that takes a great amount of perseverance. And even though his mission seems pretty hopeless, after all he wants to eradicate the world of crime, and that seems pretty much impossible, he has still never once lost his resolve in fighting this mission. So he absolutely knows how to persevere. So Batman has 7 out of 9 of these virtues when it comes to being noble. So I'd say that's probably good enough to pass. It depends if you need to have perfect marks in all of them. But even if he does need all 9, when it does come to his lack of truth, there's certainly been plenty of secret keepers who've wielded the hammer before. In fact, pretty much all of them were hiding pretty big secrets in one way or another. In fact, most of them had secret identities just for starters. And usually, it's not so much keeping secrets that's the problem. It's the guilt people feel from keeping secrets that stops them from lifting the hammer. Because if they're keeping these big secrets from those closest to them, they feel like they're not worthy and therefore can't lift the hammer. But let's face it, Batman feels no real guilt at all for his secrets. As far as he's concerned, it's all perfectly justified, as it's all part of his mission against crime. Even in the new Young Justice show, he's been keeping secrets from pretty much every hero in the world, and he still refuses to apologise, because as far as he's concerned, it's all part of the mission and it was the best thing to do, which means it was absolutely the right thing to do. My actions don't require any defence. In the same situation, I'd do it again. So taking this into account, I don't think the truth will actually stop him from being noble. And as for hospitality, although Batman can be a bit off with people, this isn't because he's a bad guy or intentionally being mean. It's basically because he has trouble interacting with people like the rest of us do. Thanks to the trauma he's faced and the way he lives his life, it's hard for him to socialise and relate to normal people. And so I think this goes with the spirit of the thing. He's not necessarily inhospitable, he just happens to have problems interacting with people in a quote-unquote normal way. And there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, it's kind of like saying if someone's autistic and they interact with people in a weird way, that there's a problem with them. There's not. They just have trouble relating. They're not actually capable of doing it. And in a lot of senses, a lot of what Batman does could be defined as being autistic. So I don't think that he's inhospitable. I think we just have to take his lack of social abilities into account because in his heart, he is actually a good person and he would be hospitable if he knew how to be. So taking all that into account, I think that we can accept that overall, Batman qualifies as being noble, at least according to the Odinism beliefs. And so then, it's really only on his strength and purity of heart that we need to decide on because those are the other criteria that the hammer generally goes by. Now, I think it's safe to say that his heart is strong enough. He carries a lot of trauma and a lot of grief with him, and he still never gives up, and his convictions never waver. It doesn't matter what or who he goes up against, he doesn't surrender and he perseveres. 
And if you do take into account the things that Batman has been through, both losing his parents and all the torture, trauma, stress and anxiety that comes with being a superhero, well, this would break a lot of people. But Batman has the heart of a warrior and it has never once weakened him. In fact, if anything, it's only made his resolve stronger. Yes, he's had his moments of doubt here and there, but that's just being alive. The point is, he's never been broken by what's happened to him and he's always continued on. So I'd say that Batman has strength of heart in spades. But purity of heart? Well, I'd certainly never describe Batman as being pure of heart. At least not in the traditional sense. The phrase pure of heart typically puts a person in mind of a kind and generous man who is forgiving and has pure intentions to help those around him. But Batman doesn't really do what he does out of pure intentions. Yes, he does want to help people and he does want to stop crime. But he mainly does what he does to get vengeance. He basically takes out his anger on the criminals of the world, which is why he sometimes is too aggressive and hurts criminals more than they really need to be hurt. But that doesn't mean he couldn't lift Fort's hammer. It seems to be that having violent intentions isn't really a problem. After all, in the MCU, Thor has attacked with deadly force and it's been fine. The requirements seem to be whether or not a person deserves the level of violence, or whether they're being picked on for no real reason. And the same seems to be true of the comics, because those who have the hammer frequently attack with violence and murderous intent. So it doesn't seem to be that being murder happy is really the problem. The problem is doing it to people who don't deserve it. And for the most part, Batman does only attack and hurt those who actually deserve it. For example, when he meets a supervillain who's about to enact a crazy homicidal pot, his first instinct is to talk to them, to reason with them and get them to surrender without violence. Yes, Batman doesn't mind the violence, in fact in a lot of respects he seems to enjoy it, but he does try to finish things in a non-violent way. And he does this against people who, quite frankly, really do deserve to be hurt. So this does show that Batman is not trying to do it unnecessarily. He's only using violence when he needs to. But does that make him pure of heart? Well, that's tough to say. And I think this is the main issue with Batman on whether he can lift the hammer. Some might say that he's too gruff and too mean to wield the hammer as this stops him from being pure of heart. But personally, I think the way that Batman is, is just an act. The way he talks and interacts is all part of his armor to protect himself from those around him because he doesn't want to get too close because he's actually quite fragile underneath it all, which does make sense. After all, when your parents are murdered right in front of you, well, you're going to have issues with letting people get close because you're going to be scared of being hurt again. And in a lot of cases, when he does let people get close, it does end badly. The classic example is, of course, Jason Todd, who he took in and adopted, and then he died. And it wasn't easy for Batman to shake this off. In fact, he still carries the grief of this to this day, because as he says, it is his greatest failure. But the way he is as Batman is also an act to inspire fear. Don't forget, the whole Batman persona in the first place is to scare people. So he's got to act tough and scary, otherwise this persona doesn't work. And he does it not because he is a horrible, tough, scary person. He does it because it's the best way to keep on mission. It's the best way to eradicate crime. And I think that underneath all of this, Batman is actually a very caring and kind person. After all, you don't do the things he does, helping others, fighting crime, saving the world from murderous crazy aliens and villains, and spending a very, very large amount of his wealth financing charities and helping people. You don't do that unless you have a good heart. So personally, I'd say that Batman would qualify as having a strong heart and having a good heart. It may not be perfectly pure, but given the type of people who have wielded Mjolnir before, I'd say having a good heart is enough to qualify. After all, Batman may not be perfect, but being worthy doesn't mean being perfect. It just means being good enough. I mean, that's literally what worthy means. You have to be good enough for something. So I think based on this, he could lift Thor's hammer. However, that's not all there is, because the other factor in this is what Batman would do with the power. It's not just about being pure of heart and noble. No, a person also has to have good intentions for the power of the hammer. Otherwise, Mjolnir will sense this and they'll still be unable to pick it up. After all, it was when Thor used the hammer to seek out battle when it was unnecessary that Odin took the hammer away from him. 
because that's not what the power was intended for, and 4 was abusing that power. So whoever has the power of 4 must use it responsibly and use it for the protection of others, and not just to seek out unnecessary confrontation and have fun. The hammer is for a noble purpose, not just for kicks. So the question is, what would Batman intend to do with the power of 4's hammer? Well, to start with, Batman is a pretty good example of being responsible. Well, for the most part. After all, he does dress up as a bat and beat up criminals in his spare time. But taking the standard superhero aspects out of his life, he is a pretty responsible guy who never kills and only does what is necessary to stop crime and keep others safe. And considering that he doesn't kill these supervillains is in a way kind of impressive because that takes enormous responsibility and self-control. And Batman never attacks people for no reason. He doesn't just beat people up because he wants to, he only goes after those that he believes are guilty or those that actually are guilty. Although to be fair, since he's such a good detective, those he goes after are almost always the guilty one. And even though he attacks them, he often goes out of his way to save the lives of the guilty as well, because he believes that everyone deserves to live and to get a chance at redemption. Now, you may not agree with that, and to a certain extent I don't, after all I don't think the Joker has any chance at redemption, but it is Batman's belief and he does stick to it, which does prove that he is a very responsible person because he's able to stick to these beliefs even in the face of adversity. But that's a normal, non-superpowered Batman, whereas a four-empowered Superman would be different, as we'd be dealing with a Bat-God. And we actually have a couple of examples to draw upon to see what he would be like with this kind of power. First of all, let's take the time that he got Superman's powers. Once he had them, he used them to constantly be Batman, working 24-7 as he didn't need to sleep anymore and so he could always be taking out the bad guys. But unfortunately, he started to turn pretty bad himself. Power corrupts and after all, who has more power than Superman? And it did corrupt Batman. He started being too violent, hurting people more than was necessary and actually turning towards the dark side. Even Nightwing turned against Batman and tried to take him out, and eventually the entire Justice League had to come together to take the power away from Batman and give it back to Superman, as the power changed Batman, and not for the better. And for our second example, let's look at the time that he became the God of Knowledge, after acquiring Metron's chair. And he did pretty much the same thing. The chair enabled him to police Gotham 24-7 as Batman, though this time he didn't seem to go too far, or at least not as far as he did when he had Superman's powers. Although some of the other Justice League members were worried, such as Green Lantern, who thought the Batman was changing and that he needed to get out of the chair. And it was clear that Commissioner Gordon thought this as well, as he thought what he was doing was going too far. But no one had the power to stop him. So on both occasions he had good intentions, and he carried out those intentions and he actually helped a lot of people. But then as time went on, the power went to his head. He took it too far and became corrupted. And I think that is all the information we need to decide if Batman could lift Thor's hammer. I think that he does qualify as being noble and strong of heart. And while pure of heart is not typically how you describe Batman, he definitely has a good heart. He isn't evil and he does want the best for everyone. And his intentions for the power of Thor would be good. So I think it's safe to say that yes, Batman could lift Thor's hammer as he is worthy. But I don't think he'd stay worthy. As we've seen over the years, worthiness is a fluid concept. Just because you're worthy one minute doesn't mean you will be the next. Even Thor himself wasn't worthy thanks to his arrogance. Then he became worthy again after discovering humility. But in the comics, he did later become unworthy again. Thor realized that the gods, including himself, are not worthy of admiration as they are vain and vengeful creatures. And this is thanks to having the powers of a god in the first place, as the power corrupts them. And I think this is a very good point when you think about who is worthy to have Thor's hammer. You see, Batman isn't really vain. He's never been that obsessed with getting admiration as either Bruce Wayne or Batman. But he is the very essence of vengeance. And I think that's why the power of gods is too much for him. He is driven by his need for revenge on criminals and on crime. And as a mortal, he can only do so much. So this keeps his need for vengeance in check. But when he gets a god's power, he is no longer limited in what he can do. And so that vengeance goes unchecked and he takes it too far. Basically, he just becomes corrupted by the power. And so that's what I think would happen. 
Yes, Batman is worthy enough and would be able to lift Mjolnir, as the hammer would sense his nobility and his good intentions and allow him to lift it. And then he would get Thor's powers and for a time be able to use them to fight crime and help a lot of people, until his need for vengeance would eventually lead to him abusing this power and taking things too far becoming unworthy and unable to hold the hammer and turning back into a mortal man once more. And once he returns to normal and realises what the power did to him, it's likely that he'd never be able to lift the hammer again, because now he knows what he would do with the power of the hammer and that it would corrupt him, and Mjolnir would sense this and not allow him to become Thor again. And of course, even if he was able to lift it, I don't think Batman would want to at all, after seeing what a tyrant he becomes with the power, it's more likely that he'd never even try to lift the hammer again, as he'd know in his heart that he's unworthy, so he wouldn't want the power at all. Now it does have to be said though that since this is the most likely outcome, it's possible that the hammer would sense that all of this would happen and thus not allow Batman to have the power in the first place. But since Batman wouldn't know any of this, I think the hammer would let him pick it up as the hammer seems to read people's hearts and minds and intentions in the moment, rather than whether they'll become corrupted or unworthy in the future. It's just about are they worthy in that second. I mean otherwise Thor himself would never have been able to pick it up in the first place because he's become unworthy, then worthy again and then unworthy again, so it really is just in the moment. And I think in the moment, Batman would be worthy. But what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my assessment? Do you think that Batman wouldn't be worthy of Mjolnir at all? Or do you think that not only would he be able to lift the hammer, but that he wouldn't even be corrupted by its powers? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments, as this is very much a discussion video, and I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on the subject. After all, this is all hypothetical, I mean the hammer's not even in the DC Universe, and even if there was a crossover, it would have to go back to the Marvel Universe. My point being that there are no wrong answers, so if you have another theory on what would happen, then please let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.